Hello and welcome to the Peace Security Channel everybody as per the voting results in my Facebook page I'm going to do a review on Zone Alarm Antivirus Bliss Firewall which is a free product so let's open up the user interface so this is what it looks like I had taken a look at this before and the major issue concerning me was uh, the bugginess of this program it was still not quite prepared for a complete test so Today I've decided that it's looking quite stable, so I will give it my standard test and see how it competes with the other free security suites. Now, as for features, they've got quite some features here. They've got a traditional antivirus with real-time protection. And let's check for updates to make sure we've got the latest signatures. And they've also got a firewall which is nice for a free application. They've got some kind of basic firewall and then they've got application control. Now this program is pretty much based on Kaspersky which is a paid product so it's good to see they have brought in the Kaspersky application control here. I'm not quite sure uh, if this is similar to Kaspersky's system but I know they've got some settings here. You can either customize each of the settings or you can just leave it to automatic so I haven't messed with any of the settings here as you can see we've got all our process and uh, I guess you can remove them from application control so it's very much like Kaspersky's but it's a little less user friendly for me I mean I don't know but we'll see how that comes into play against zero day malware now we've got uh, web identity protections and online backup. Not sure what this identity protection does. So maybe protects your pre credit card and stuff like that. Sure it's up to date. It is. Now let's go into the advanced settings. We've got plenty of scan options. We've got heuristics and uh, you know it automatically skips sign Microsoft sign files which is nice then we've got scan targets you can start a scan here then we've got these settings now here's something that I do not like now I know this is a free version but they should at least uh, enable you know smart mode scanning because uh, that would considerably reduce the resource usage and that's what you want from a free product but right now they've got on access scanning and uh, you just cannot change these settings it's locked so if you want to change these you have to pay them for it which is not nice I mean if you don't want to give uh, users everything for free you can add or remove a feature but I feel that scanning should be customizable but anyway we'll see how it goes then they've got some kind of behavioral scanning which is nice so it looks pretty much packed the security suite it's got all the features that you'd want in fact it's got more than the fe regular free antivirus features so we'll see how it turns out but now for the pretty important part because uh, a lot of users are concerned about their antivirus using a lot of memory and uh, well the concerns are valid because this thing uses a ton of memory which is absolutely unacceptable now 100 megs maybe I'd say well maybe on fast computers but 250 that's that's pretty huge if you look at all the process it's gonna come around 240 250 megabytes thanks to this huge service taking up 220 megabytes on its own and I've seen the CPU use its spike as well it can go up to 10 percent so that's not nice at all I mean this for me is uh, a killing blow for a security suite that's free and all that um, everybody wants low resource usage and even if I have like a 10 gigabyte RAM computer, a pre-modern computer, I would still not like my antivirus to use up 250 megabytes of RAM because after all I've paid for each megabyte so I certainly don't want it wasted and this is a lot of RAM to take up 
I mean, come on, Windows XP can run in 256 megabytes of RAM and still have enough RAM to spare to run applications. Why does an antivirus have to use 220, 230, 250 megabytes of RAM just to keep you secure? That's that's a joke, seriously. But anyway, it seems to be running okay on this one gigabyte machine, so two gigabyte machine, I pardon, pardon me for that, but let's see. So to start with we've got some malicious URLs, we'll try them out and see how it responds. Now this thing does use Kaspersky's signature, so I'm expecting some pretty good signature based protection and since it's got a firewall and application control shouldn't do too bad on the zero day section as well. This is interesting. So it's either dead. It is dead, I guess. Here's the second file. So it replaces your download manager or whatever and it uses its own. I don't like that. I don't like antivirus companies doing all that because all I want is protection. I don't like your fancy browser toolbar and your fancy download manager. Now it looks like it led that file straight through. There it is, running just fine. Here's another one. So it looks like this one was caught and it's being treated. Now I really do not like this kind of an alert system. I would really love them to make a separate alert system rather than, you know, all this. And now it says start advanced disinfection. Now Kaspersky only does that when uh, a system file is infected or some really bad infections are happening, but this is just a file that hasn't even made it to hasn't even made it into my computer to be honest. It's pretty much in the temp files, but it still wants to I don't know, start an advanced disinfection. I mean, I get this feeling all the time that the software isn't quite ready yet. It's got a lot of work to be done and nobody's doing it. So how much time do I have to wait for it to just delete a temp file? I mean, the time it's taking, I'd rather go out there and do it myself. So that's not good at all. They need to catch up on that. Need better alerts. Okay, so it's going to remove that on reboot. Let's try run this one. Now this one's being treated as well. So again, advanced disinfection. Why not just stop the malware? from starting itself in the first place. Why let it run a process and then start your advanced disinfection to get rid of it? I really do not find why they do this. And this can cause lots of problems. Like this. You keep answering the alerts because it's not running properly and the antivirus is trying to get rid of it. Oh damn. And in some cases it might actually be more annoying than the malware itself, so I'm not pleased at all. So it looks like it's not going to let me continue the test. I'll have to reboot first. So I'll do that and I'll be right back.
So I rebooted and Zone Alarm seems to have started up correctly. Now look, I don't want to jump to too many conclusions, but for me it just feels like the software isn't quite ready for use. I mean, it's, it's not as stable and as uh, user friendly as it should be. I mean, the kind of issues we're coming up with are okay for a beta or maybe even a release candidate, but a software that is out there for so long and it's a final version, so I really do not like all this stuff. They need to refine their alert system, maybe the way the mal it treats the malware. They have to do a lot of work. So another one gets through. And what's about this uh, download manager? Doesn't seem to be catching anything through its analyzing. Of course, these are all new, pretty new files. They're all zero day. You can see everything's turned on. I haven't messed with anything at all. Now administrator privileges required by the malware. No response from zone alarm. Again, nothing from zone alarm yet. As you can see, everything's enabled. I'm not playing with this or anything. And it's got its application control, which would be interesting to see because it should have blocked some of these or at least restricted them from doing something harmful, which maybe it is doing in the background. It says it's auto, smart defense. Trust level is unknown. So it's really not telling me much. Everything is unknown pretty much. So I don't know how, what it's doing, whether it's restricting it or not. We'll find out soon enough. So it looks like another one went in. And most probably this is going to cause my browser to crash. While it's trying to exploit the vulnerabilities present in it. So there you go, check for a solution and restart the program, that's what I'm going to do. So I don't want to get you guys bored, so I'll just pause while this is doing. So we've got three more links to do before I do a scan and find out what exactly Zone Alarm let in. Maybe the zero day components are doing some work silently so this one's dead now zone alarms found some new updates again in the middle of the test which is fine I'll let it update or maybe it's just doing its regular check so I'll come back when this is done So we can continue now. 
got this really nice looking link here it's dead unfortunately so let's try the last one I'm sure this one will work this is a double extension as you can see .mkv.exe and this one's cut, it's uh, Trojan Spy Win32 Zbot and it's being treated so I'll let it do its treating and all that and then I will reboot the computer, run CCleaner and do a scan with Malwarebytes and I will be right back with the results looks like ZoneLarm found another file probably this file tried to create another file and now that's found as well so it's treating that too but to me what it looks like is it's first letting everything run and then it's scanning the memory and then it's coming up with these things which is not a great way to do it I think everything that should be scanned before it's open rather than after so I really wish they improved this process so anyway I'll do what I said and I'll be right back Malwarebytes finished scanning and looks like it's found three items here. We've got a couple of hack tools. Uh, one in System32. Now that is not a good sign. System32 is a pretty bad place to get infected because it gives the malware a lot of power to cause a lot of problems. So two files in the Windows folder. Then we've got a red streak key that has been changed so in most cases I'd call this an average performance let's look at Hitman Pro it's also caught uh, a piece of Trojan missed the other two so either way um, as I said most cases average performance but considering uh, the amount of resources it used uh, there's absolutely no reason why I'd use this program Zone alarm and uh, yeah one more thing since this review took quite some time I'm going to break this into two videos so this will be just the prevention test and in the next video or part two I will be doing the malware removal and zero day test so I'll do that later on and as for now the verdict uh, stays uh, below average because uh, in terms of resources it's uh, costs you an arm and a leg and uh, in terms of performance it just gives you average so I don't know I mean uh, it did not at all compensate the resource usage with any exceptional security features so pretty poor stuff needs a lot of improvement considering the time it took uh, to remove the threats and the way it interacted with the user which was quite poor you know an average uh, security performance so it's it's not good to be honest but we'll find out in the next part of the test how well it does in that and accordingly I'll give the final verdict so some alarm fans or enemies whatever you are fingers crossed we'll see you at the next review